Okay, this is our tutorial on how to open layers in Photoshop. What you will need is obviously the picture that you want to be working on, and you will need your Mac computer with a copy of Photoshop, which is our square blue PS icon on the dock. The easiest way to open your document is literally drag it and drop it over that icon, and it should open up in Photoshop. Now, if, like this one, your display isn't movable, the easiest way to rectify that is click our display menu at the bottom here, and hopefully we should go through to the one where it is movable. And because you're going to be looking at multiple documents, possibly at the same time, this is the most useful configuration to have. Right. Now we want to add another layer to this document. We've got our lion in our background layer. And we want to actually stop that. We want to put it into another layer itself. So what we're going to do is go to our select menu at the top. And we're going to say select all. Now you'll see a little dotty box go around the whole of your image. If you now go to edit and say cut, you'll see all of your background go white. What you're going to do now is go to edit again at the top and do a paste. And what this should have done is if you now go to your layers menu, which hopefully, if it's not showing, go to the window menu and pick layers. This will bring up a box somewhere on your screen and you should see the layers that you've got showing in your Photoshop document. Now the first one will always be background, so that's what's ever the base layer. Then my new image is pasted in on what's called layer one. Now if you're doing a lot of layers, one thing you can do, you should be able to name your layers. I don't know why I can't do that at the moment, but since we're only going to do a few, usually you can click into that and name your layer. So our lion is on layer one. Now if I want to put another layer on top of that, I can go to my layers menu at the top. And I can say new layer, come across and just say layer. So this one's going to be called layer two. And I'll say OK. Now I've got what is essentially a transparent piece of plastic sitting on the top of my lion image. So if I decide to use my brush, and I'll pick quite a large brush just for the sake of argument, and I can then draw onto the top of my lion, or do anything I like, and it won't affect the lion underneath. If I then want to rub that out, I can rub that out without getting rid of anything of my lion or hurting my background. It's only affecting that second layer, so layer number two, which is on the top. Now, if obviously I want to do something to my lion without affecting that other layer on the top, so if I just draw something back onto my layer number two, now I want to look at my lion and not at my layer number two. So what I would do is click into layer number one. And then if I actually wanted to rub out anything of the lion's layer and have it not affect that piece in layer number two, I can also do that. This also won't affect the background layer. So this is only affecting that pasted in image of my lion. So I'll just scrub out my background. Now if you want to move your layers independently, you can also do this. So I'm going to click into my layer number two, and if I click onto my little pointer tool at the top, I can now pick up and move that second layer and put it anywhere I want to. So this can be really useful if you've done little bits and changes that you only want to affect certain areas of your canvas. Now you can also change what's called the opacity of your image. Now if I put that back over the top again, you'll see what I mean. 
On the side of your layers palette here, you'll see an opacity slider bar. This will make your image more or less transparent. So at the moment, our grey is fully blocking out our lion image underneath it. If we slide that down to 50%, you'll see that your lion starts to come up and be seen through your grey. And obviously if I take that right down to zero, that layer will then disappear. So if you want to layer up partial images and just have one showing through another, this is a really easy way of doing it. And then, of course, you can still move that round however you want to and have it at that opacity. Now, of course, you could also start to delete pieces. You can use that opacity tool on your brush by using that opacity slider at the top on your tools palette. And you can then start to just slightly get rid of any of those pieces freehand as well. So if you wanted one piece that was slightly more um, transparent than another piece, you could actually do that with your eraser just by working your opacity on your tools palette rather than on your uh, layers palette, because that's only going to be affecting those bits that you are actually covering up. Right. When you're using your layers, all of your tools work in exactly the same way as they normally would. They will obviously only work on those particular layers. So if I wanted now to select the white piece in my lion layer, I would obviously have to click into my layer one, and then I can select that whole area, and it won't have selected anything from layer two or anything from the background. It will just be that one area in there. So if I then wanted to cut that area out, I could do. Or if I wanted to fill that with something, I could also fill that area with something as well. Now obviously I filled that with grey, so you're now not seeing your other image underneath. So if I undo my paint bucket, and if I have a look at my colour palette on the side, just pick green. So now you can see I filled that background in on that layer and it hasn't affected my other layer sitting on the top of it. Now, if at any time you want to change which layer sits on top of which, you can actually just pick one up and drag it above or below those layers. So now I would have to make my lion more opaque and you'll start to see that other layer coming up underneath it. But obviously, the more opaque that I make it, then it will disappear underneath. And if you want to take that back, again, you can just pull your other layer back on top. So if you do want any more layers, you can then just go to your layer and new and layer, and you can actually paste those in. Now, if you wanted to paste in a second image on top of your first image, you would actually have to open your second image in Photoshop as well. And this is where having those two different views that you can pull around is quite useful. The first thing you will need to do is make sure that they are the same dots per inch. Now this refers to the resolution of the image, how big it is in its digital size. So to check this, you'd go to your image palette and you'd go to image size. Now our image is 72 dots per inch here and it's a physical size of about 167 centimetres wide. Now, on my other image, if I do the same, go to that image palette and image size. So we're also 72 dots per inch, so that's the same, but we're actually much smaller in physical size. We're only 45 centimetres wide. Now, if I wanted all of my second image to fit into that same amount of space, I would actually have to go to the image size and change my physical size. So to do that, I would then just put in 45, if I do 46 to make it just slightly bigger, and say OK. And then what I can do with this is say select all and do an edit and a copy. Now what I can do is I can paste it into my layer 3, which is in the top there, or sometimes when you paste it in, it will also go into its own layer automatically. Yeah, so we've pasted it into that layer 3. 
So now I can obviously move that around as a separate layer. And what I'm going to do is also pull that below my layer one of my lion. So now what I can do is if I make my lion Oh, sorry, working on the wrong layer. If I'm making my lion a little bit opaque, I've got my layer three and I'll just take the opacity back up again. What I'm going to do is just start to bring some of that texture in behind my lion. Now I've just done that on the wrong layer. So always pay attention to the layer you're working on. If you do anything wrong, you can go to the history palette in the window menu and just move back to the one that you were working on. So now I'm going to go onto my layer one again. And so this time I'll be working on my line. Right, and now if I take my line's opacity all the way back up, I should still see a little bit of that texture coming through underneath. So the more I take away with my eraser, the more I will start to see that texture coming up. So in this way, you can build up the different layers that you've got in your Photoshop document.